Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be talking about a fairly large weather pattern that will be impacting the United States this week and next week bringing a heat wave however there is some cooler weather coming to parts of the country and we'll also be discussing the significant severe weather potential as we head into next week. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. We'll begin with with really the entire Great Plains. It's actually quite impressive this afternoon, but we've seen a ton of showers and storms exploding across the United States. A lot of convection ongoing right now. You'll notice all the red that's showing right now. I'll go and pause the screen here, but all the red that we're seeing is all thunderstorms. We will see them anywhere from Louisiana all the way back through Canada. Fairly impressive stuff here. Not really any of this is severe. We've had very isolated severe weather this afternoon, but there is a ton of moisture. and We have a lot of instability, so this is why we're seeing that thunderstorm development today, and also really the high pressure pressure system that we have up in the northeast it's not really doing much of any favors to the storm development we're going to continue to see showers and storms across the great plains over the next several days as that little ridge in the northeast united states sits there and prevents most of that severe weather development elsewhere we do have a low pressure system just sitting off the coast of california that'll actually be bringing a threat for severe weather to california believe it or not for this time of the year that's pretty shocking and that'll be ongoing for the rest of this afternoon and evening now the big talk over the past several days has been the pattern change that we're expecting in the United States, not just this week, but also next week. There will be some pretty big changes to the forecast, and one of which I've not really mentioned a whole lot is the temperature change, because some areas will actually be seeing much cooler temperatures than what is currently ongoing. So let's kind of take you through the next few days on the jet stream. We'll begin with the current setup for today. There is a massive ridge in the northern plains. That is in the upper level, so there's still some storm development. Our lower level surface ridge is back over into the Midwest, but we're right now watching this massive ridge in the upper levels that is going to prevent most likely most storm development in those areas and not just that but we'll be seeing much warmer conditions with that now there's a couple of other areas that really need to be watched for closely one of which is a trough ejection in the southwest united states this might increase severe weather just a little bit as we go into later this week but no significant severe weather expected out of that then back over in the northeast we have another low pressure system it's a little backdoor low pressure system almost fairly strong jet stream over there this will actually be ushering in cold colder air and even some showers and storms to areas in the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and the Northeast. So quite interesting setup there. I'll show you what the temperatures look like in just a moment. Once I go through the rest of this week, that ridge remains in place. We'll see that low pressure system though really start to extend. That jet stream shifts to the west. We'll actually have a fairly big extension of this low pressure system. That'll usher in even cooler air to areas in the Midwest and as well as the Ohio Valley. Notice that little trough back over in the Southwest United States. This will not really move at all in the United States. It's gonna basically sit there but it will weaken as we get closer to the weekend but notice by the weekend that trough basically fizzles out we have a massive wall extending from southwest canada into southeast florida it's a large area now that does not mean that there will be dry air all across the united states it'll still be very humid at the surface but this does mean a loft drier air is expected and much warmer temperatures across a large region here i mean that's a very large area low pressure system continues to spin in the northeast very beneficial for the cooler weather for those in the northeast but showers and storm chances are not looking and very high right now once we go into the late weekend and early, into early next week that is when things again get very interesting in the united states notice at the bottom left of your screen that is where our next trough ejection is as we go into late sunday this is going to be something to watch for very closely because if it can maintain its intensity which as of right now computer models have been showing it likely will this could actually bring some significant severe weather into the united states now really where does this go does it go further to the north does this trough kind of ride down here to the south it's going to be a big question mark depending on where it goes that that could determine if we do see significant severe weather and where we see that significant severe weather. Also notice another backdoor low pressure system in the Midwest as we go into Sunday. That could actually become a fairly strong trough. You'll notice here going into maybe even Tuesday into Wednesday of next week, kind of long-term forecasting here. But by then, this could actually intensify and potentially bring some severe weather to the Northeast and as well as cooler weather and shower and storm chances that are desperately needed for a lot of areas as a drought does continue. And now for the temperatures, this is something I really have not talked about a whole lot in the previous forecast but notice the temperature anomaly this is giving us basically the average of what the temperatures will be in the united states basically red is above average and blue is below average the darker the colors are the more above or below average they are you'll notice going into late tuesday above average temperatures do continue with that massive wall extending from the southeast united states into canada record-breaking temperature potential still continues in canada notice that low pressure system back over in the northeast all that cooler air kind of circling around it in that counterclockwise motion that's going to continue to pull cooler air look at this by Wednesday night, cooler air will actually start to usher
venture into areas like the Midwest, which the Midwest has been super hot recently with hardly any rainfall. So really something that a lot of you folks are looking at over the next few days. Once we go into Friday into Saturday, that is when it will likely be the coolest in areas like the Northeast. That is where we're starting to see some of those darker blues. And then once we go into the weekend and enter the following week, that is when, again, things become more uncertain. But if we do have that trough coming out of Canada, that could actually start to usher in cooler air to a larger chunk of the country, including the Central Plains and even the Midwest and potentially even into the Southern Plains. And before being June and just next to summer, it's actually a nice little weather pattern that we're in as we go into next week. But obviously, we are still in a very stagnant pattern right now. Now, the Climate Prediction Center does, for, for the most part, agree with this forecast. Cooler weather is actually expected in the southwest United States with that trough ejection over the next several days. This is from Sunday into next Thursday. So basically next week, that is when below average temperatures are possible for a large chunk of the country. Equal chances for those in the northeast and then above average temperatures are likely for those in the northern plains and as well as the southern parts of Texas into the southeast United States. So again, the wall will start to move a bit as we go into next week, which is great because obviously we've been in a super stagnant pattern. Now for the low level winds, this gives us an idea of severe weather potential as we go into next week. Overall this week, there's not a whole lot of low level winds in the low level jet. The low level jet is what helps to rotate supercells and produce a tornado risk. We're really not looking at that across the United States, but once we start to get more organized systems next week, you'll notice when we go into late Sunday into Monday, that is when that first system could pose a threat for some severe weather. We'll also be watching over in the southwest United States for that other trough ejection. So there'll be a couple of different threats to watch for as we go into early next week. Now, things are obviously going to change between now and then, so keep that in mind, but this will definitely be something to watch for. Computer models have been very consistent with this so far. And for the first time in quite a while, I'll be showing you the instability across the United States over the next several days. This is essentially like putting gasoline into a vehicle, but in this sense, it is essentially what fuels severe thunderstorms for development. Now, overall, for the next several days, we have a lot of instability in the Great Plains. That'll continue. Massive ridge back over in the Midwest. This is where we have that strong southerly pole that's pulling moisture into areas like the Great Plains. Once we go into the weekend, that instability continues. Fairly high values, by the way, in southern Texas, but instability is not everything. We need a strong low-level jet for tornadic activity. This is basically what at least indicates the potential for damaging winds or hail if there's initiators. But overall, again, this is just one of multiple ingredients. I mean, we're talking about dozens of ingredients, but it is a critical one for some supercellular development. Once we go into next week, instability starts to grow again. One key notice into next week with the European model, it does indicate some instability into areas like the Northeast. So if we do get that trough set up, that is where we could see some substantial severe weather if things are able to start to strengthen. But right now, it seems like a very low chance at this time that we'll actually see significant severe weather with that. But once we go into Tuesday into Wednesday with that other trough ejection in the southwest United States, that is when we could see some severe weather pop up, and this could be a bit more significant than the other trough back up into the northeast. So a couple things to really watch for over the next several days. For the severe weather in the short term, for today, very low risks all across the country. We have five marginal risks of severe weather. One in South Texas, one in Montana, one in California. Shocker, by the way. One over in the Mid-Atlantic region, and also one down in Southern Florida. For tomorrow, similar story, same areas pretty much. One back over in the West Coast area, also one over in New Mexico in the High Plains region, and also into South Carolina and Florida. And then once we go into Wednesday, another couple or three marginal risks of severe weather will basically be removing one at a time. One over on the western side of the United States, one in the High Plains, and then another one back over near the Mid-Atlantic region. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already. This forecast is brought to you by Platinum Contracting.